Hey guys, Ben Beck here for the Next Level Showcast on Next Level Radio, and let me tell you, this interview that you are about to listen to well exceeded our expectations. This is somebody that Adam and I were both extremely anxious to speak to, extremely excited to speak to, and really looking forward to, and this interview like blew away everything we had anticipated with this interview. We spoke with this gentleman. We thought we were going to get 10 to 15 minutes, uh, and we ended up talking to him for over an hour. He was extremely engaging. He was extremely awesome just to talk to. We got a lot of insight into the background of his career, a lot of insight into fight coordination, into stunt coordination, into uh, the television show Arrow, which is the one that he's currently working on now, as well as a bunch of other things that he had worked on that we have been fans of for a long time. We really, really, really enjoyed doing this interview. We really enjoyed speaking to this guy about everything that we did and we hope that you enjoy listening to this interview as much as we enjoyed doing it so please sit back and enjoy our interview with stunt and fight coordinator james banford all right guys ben and adam here for next level showcast on next level radio and we are joined tonight by another awesome special guest we've been looking forward to talking to for quite some time please welcome to our show james banford um so james stunt performer correct Mm-hmm. Um, tell yep. us, tell us a little bit about Stunt Canada. Stunt Canada. Um, Stunt Canada is the oldest and uh, largest stuntmen's association in Canada. Um, it was established in 1970, and uh, it is the membership um, contains uh, some of the most talented and uh, experienced stunt performers, second unit directors, and stunt coordinators, and stunt actors uh, in Canada, uh, or in North America, for that matter. And you're the, you're the president of Stunt Canada now, correct? I am the current president, yes. How long, how long have you been a part of Stunt Canada? Huh. Um, let's see here. Um, it's been in my been involved with my career since I started. Uh, as a lot of the stunt coordinators I worked for when I was first starting out that I respected were uh, Stunt Canada members. Um, uh, it's 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 a it's a group that you get voted into as opposed to just being absorbed. Um, I myself, gee, I think it was around. 97 98 99 something like that is that how long uh, is that how long you've been a coordinator or a performer uh, that's how long I would have been a stunt Canada member oh, okay I've been a I've, I've been a I've been a stunt man and uh, uh, you don't automatically just become a stunt coordinator um, uh, generally you go through being well everybody it, it works different for everyone but uh, the usual route is uh, stunt performer, uh, cover coordinator, and then stunt coordinator, and then sometimes later second unit director, director, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I've been a, a stunt man and, and involved in the stunt part of the industry uh, as well as an actor and whatnot since so oh, 1990, 91-ish. Okay, so yeah, so, I would you, say. so you definitely have your time in the business. <laughs> uh, yeah, a little, little bit of time, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so, speaking of stunts, what was the most difficult stunt that you've had to learn? I mean, obviously, you've been doing it for you said about a oh, while. Wow. Yeah, twenty four years now. Um, in that time, I'm sure you've learned a ton of different, you know, moves and everything. What's what was the most difficult that you can think of? Oh geez, uh, I get asked that a lot. Um, it's a really tough answer. Um, I've had both my hips replaced um, in the last few years. Um, I've had the one of my lats, um, lat muscles, uh, kind of torn in half. And oh, my, yeah, that's got to hurt. Had my tricep torn in half. Uh, it, I don't know. I, by difficult, do you mean most painful or? Uh, <laughs> well, um, I was just thinking technique wise. Technique wise, um, also very difficult to answer. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's been it's been a well, it's been a pretty long career, and 
and um, uh, different uh, different challenges present themselves throughout uh, throughout the career. So right. um, uh, different things uh, required. I mean, uh, Blade Three, for instance, I was brought in. Um, later on in, in the film, I wasn't available to begin with, and they needed someone to double Dominic Purcell uh, to fight um, Dracula. Wesley Snipes as Blade. Yeah, exactly. That's a great um, And the, the final fight sequence they had been putting together and rehearsing for, I think, three to four months prior. And uh, I stepped off a plane. I was working on the Chronicles of Riddick and uh, Scooby-Doo 2 and a few other things. Uh, that earlier that year, and I decided to take off and go to the Bahamas, I, I believe. And I stepped off a plane and got a, got a phone call the moment I stepped off the plane. Hey, can you come down here and uh, try on these leather pants and <laughs> et cetera, et cetera? And I was like, guys, I just, I just, I literally just walked off a plane from the Bahamas and I'm really relaxed right now. And no, oh, come on, we need you to double this guy and blah, blah, blah. And you get to learn this fight and we don't have a guy right now. And so you um, ended up trying it anyway? For months. Yeah, I went down there and, and wow. um, I guess the, the, the answer to your question was the, the challenge was that I had literally, um, I think, about two hours to learn this huge uh, sword fight wow. um, that they'd been rehearsing for a few months. And uh, and uh, I just said, I, I, it's impossible. I can't do it. And, and the fight choreographer uh, Chuck Jeffrey said, "Oh, come on, sure you can. Uh, we, we've heard you'll be able to learn that in 15 minutes. All right, sure, yeah, you're saying that. Yeah, so that, I, say that right? I'll try. Um, but somehow, I have no idea. Um, I learned it in a couple hours, and we put it on film the next day, and uh, and uh, it went extremely well." Um, so uh, that that was a big challenge, but um, I don't know. There's been so many that just yeah. popped into my head just for whatever reason. Well, it takes a dedicated man to leave the Bahamas uh, <laughs> after just getting there. I can say that. <laughs> no, I was actually there. Uh, I, I had actually landed home uh, when the phone rang. I, oh, I, okay. I, I probably probably wouldn't have left. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wouldn't have blamed you. I arrived. You had mentioned you tore your tricep. Was that that was I assume doing a stunt? Which which stunt would you say would be then the most dangerous? I guess most, you know, likely to get injured off of. Um, that again is very very hard to to answer. Uh, sometimes the most simplest, um, simplest stunts uh, nick you or sting you. Right. Um, that particular injury in my tricep was doing a, a ratchet. A, a wire stunt um, on X Men Two. Um, I think it was uh, during a rehearsal, actually, and uh, uh, doubling uh, Hugh Jackman, um, the Wolverine character. And uh, at some point um, in the rehearsal, I got uh, inverted uh, in the air, which was part of the part of the stunt, but. Right. Um, uh, through the flight, but um, one of my feet got caught up in the other character who was also on a wire, up in uh, her wire, and I remained inverted, and I basically got dropped on my head um, from, it was about a 60-foot travel, um, although it was into a pad, but of course I, right. I put my hands up to protect my, uh, put my hands up to protect my head, and uh, my arm got sort of uh, well, all my weight um, upside right. down ended up on my elbow, and that's what tore my tricep. Yeah, it's kind of just natural reflex to do that. Um, yeah, yeah, you'd rather not break your neck. But, um, yeah. uh, I mean, I've been injured doing, and I've seen people be injured, uh, fight sequences, just just hitting the ground repetitively over and right. over again onto the cement. Uh, obviously, a high <laughs> fall, you know, you do an 80-foot high fall if you miss the airbag. Well, you're dead. So um, that's uh, uh, <laughs> that would be a, a dangerous stunt. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> getting hit by a car, car hits. Um, you see, you see less and less um, classic stunts these days um, because of the advent of visual effects. So right. 
um, where, you know, the time I was brought up in, you'd see somebody get hit by a car or uh, execute a high fall without a wire, a free fall, um, on a regular basis. But but uh, nowadays, uh, you just don't see that as much. Um, right. There's a lot of uh, wires, and, and it's very easy. I think it's it's about five hundred dollars per shot um, to remove a wire in in visual effects. So, wow. when when you see a lot of the high falls nowadays, you're, there's a wire involved. Five hundred dollars just to take a wire out. I feel like I could oh, do that, it on my computer a little cheaper. Yeah, that that's <laughs> per shot. So, okay. <laughs> uh, if you see a high fall and it goes on for a while. And it's, it, there's several different shots involved. Right. You, you could be looking up to fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but I actually just was in Disney World last week, and I was—I uh, don't know if you've ever been down to the one in Florida, but they have a uh, yeah. uh, the stunt show, the um, Indiana Jones stunt show. Yeah, yeah, there? I've been there. Yeah, I've I've been there actually to the one in Florida. Yeah, they had mentioned that um, you know. Obviously, in that show, there's uh, fight scenes and stuff, but there's also explosives. And, you know, they mentioned how working with explosives uh, is dangerous, but actually more injuries occur from just fight sequences. Would you agree that that's correct? Yes. Um, Simply because, uh, well, simply because fight sequences are 80%, I would say, of your work. Um, the, The fight is the most common form of of stunt. Mm-hmm. Um, there's far more uh, fights written into scripts than there are um, giant explosions or, right. or, or car chases or anything like that. Fights are just uh, a lot cheaper to yeah, produce. I was gonna say. Um, and if you're good at them, they have a um, they have a, uh, a, a you know a huge uh, impact on the screen and uh, can really um, manipulate the audience uh, emotionally and spiritually, etc. Well, yeah, Arrow, by the way, does a great job of doing that. You do a fantastic job on that show. Oh, thank um, you. Thank you. It's, it's, it's a great honor to be part of that show, and particularly the, the, the fights. Uh, we have a great time. Right. Now, would you say that most uh, injuries that do occur, um, would you say that's just because uh, fight scenes are becoming like more intense, or do you think you know it just happens sometimes a little bit of slip in focus, or is it because you're basically – trying to hit the person without hitting them? Um, uh, well, let's just back up to the history of a stunt performer uh, <laughs> right off the bat. Um, a stunt performer has a 100% likelihood of being injured. <laughs> so um, there's a 100% injury rate uh, in the career of a stunt performer. Uh, so right there... You take that and then you look, you examine what's the most common stunt. And as I mentioned previously, mm-hmm. uh, it's a fight sequence. So um, in a fight sequence, you're hitting cement. Um, hence, uh, I've had both my hips replaced, um, not to mention thrown, I don't know, hundreds of thousands, millions of kicks um, over the years. But but uh, but you're you're looking at an impact that that your bones, your joints, just are not made to uh, to take on a daily basis. Yeah. If you're a busy stunt for, performer, which um, I've been very fortunate to have been in, in my in my younger years and mm-hmm. and throughout my career, I've, I've been very fortunate to work a lot and double and be a size, you know, six foot uh, tall, 180-ish pounds. Um, I've been fortunate enough to double a lot of a lot of actors, uh, just because that's a, a very common size right. um, in, a, in a lead uh, male actor. And um, I've been fortunate enough to work a lot, um, and that means I've also been fortunate enough to hit the pavement um, repetitively. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's a uh, bit of a double-edged sword, I guess. That, yeah, that takes its toll. I wouldn't I wouldn't give it away. Uh, for the world, um, but that's just part of the job. Uh, fight sequences um, involve one or several other individuals. Mm-hmm. So when you're dealing with, hopefully, like the uh, the people that I hire as far as uh, within a fight sequence or, or for the fight team are, are the cream of the crop 
um, usually, or unless for some reason we can't get uh, the people that we want because they're unavailable. But um, uh, generally, the people that I would hand pick um, have the have the uh, uh, utmost timing, um, speed, power, um, and uh, training and ability. Um, so it's, uh, I don't like to say it's a dance as a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. Um, I like to take the dance out of fight choreography by bumping up the timing, um, and make it look like a fight, of course, because right. the, anybody can choreograph something, uh, that within a fight that looks like a dance, but, uh, not everybody can, uh, take that and then make, uh, the timing, um, make it look like it's actually a fight, yet keep all the technique uh, intact and whatnot. Right. Um, so, so that's the challenge. Um, there's, and your original question was, uh, why do these things happen? Why do injuries occur? Well, you're not, you can only account for yourself. You can't account for your partner. Um, there's usually a little bit of both people or several people. Sometimes there's one person fighting seven people or, uh, we did a fight uh, last week that was one person fighting um, a recycled amount of about 35 people. So, oh, <laughs> yeah, little little things occur, especially when you're trying to remember the choreography. <laughs> we spent all day doing a yeah. a huge fight sequence, and uh, we I think we rehearsed a total of 22 hours <laughs> um, with the with uh, Stephen Amell rehearsing and. Uh, and stunt people rehearsing and whatnot, and you still get, you know, some slight miscalculation. Yeah. Somebody leans forward uh, one inch when they shouldn't have, uh, and you get hit in the temple with a stick or a club or, you know, you name it. Some other blunt uh, object. Yeah, yeah, blunt object, a sharp <laughs> object, you know, you, you call it. Everything's, I've seen everything happen at this point. Yeah. But that's just par for the course. Um, we get hit. We get bruised we tore we tear ligaments uh, we pull muscles um uh the actors even stevens uh pulled quite a few muscles um he trains a lot as you know uh to keep up uh that physique of his yeah. <laughs> um he's yeah he's inhuman that way um so you know he, he pulls muscles a lot he's got to keep up uh um a really uh tight regime of, of fitness and nutrition and sometimes you get dehydrated and whatnot, and, and uh, injuries occur, uh, even with the actors. But what but I'm there to prevent, not, I mean, also there to achieve uh, a high level of action, but we're also there to prevent injuries to our actors. Um, if something happens to Steven, then the whole show goes away. Yeah, So. right. Yeah. And that's a lot of that's a lot of jobs, and I don't want to be responsible for <laughs> yeah. people losing their job. Yeah. Now, now you had mentioned earlier too. You had you've done a couple of different things: stunt coordinator, fight coordinator, stunt performer, you know, just to name a few. Um, and now on Arrow, yeah. you're co-stunt coordinator, and as well as the fight coordinator. Uh, other yeah. than other than the main the main uh, thing, obviously, of going from someone who performs to someone who teaches, are there any really a big differences in those job titles? Uh, there's a huge difference uh, in between stunt performer and, and, and stunt coordinator. Um, a huge difference. Um, uh, a performer um, has that uh, need to, well, to perform, simply put. Um, a performer um, likes... Uh, well, you know, the only audience you have when you're performing on television or, or film is, of course, the film crew, mm -hmm. um, and who, who regularly, uh, do grace us with applause and, and, and uh, <laughs> and whatnot, uh, which, which is, which is very, uh, very great thing. Um, they show their appreciation and, and uh, it's nice to, to feel that. Um, the performers, um, of course, uh, endure a lot of physical pain. Um, that having a high pain threshold is, is part of the job. Um, uh, of course, you don't uh, encounter that as a stunt coordinator. Uh, stunt coordinator's job is far more um, 
uh, tedious as far as it's it's very involved uh, planning wise, planning, scheming, plotting, uh, budgeting, uh, choreographing, um, polishing, polishing, uh, meetings, 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 uh, reading scripts, that sort of thing. Uh, it's it's a lot more um, management uh, involved. Um, a stunt performer is, I guess, if you were to put it into uh, military terminology, a stunt performer would be the soldier, and the stunt coordinator would be the captain or the general. Okay. Uh, okay. And the direct the director would be the general. The stunt coordinator would be a captain, <laughs> as uh, just like in the mafia, and or <laughs> uh, the other uh, the other departments of hair, makeup, wardrobe. Uh, right. The assistant directors are all. Um, also captains, the heads of those departments as well. So okay. we're part of the, a piece of the puzzle. Okay. Um, and when you act as a, as a stunt performer and you're doubling an actor, how long does it usually take you to like uh, prepare and coordinate so that you look like the actor that you're supposed to be this way, like the audience can't tell? That really depends on, on the actor. And uh, <laughs> uh, back in the day when I first started um, – there wasn't as many people out there, so there wasn't as many. Uh, the stunt performer, uh, the position was a, was a very elite. I mean, it still is the per capita in the world. There's not that many stunt performers in, uh, compared to the you know civilian population. Mm. But uh, back in the day, there was far less stunt performers out there, and people just simply didn't know how to go about becoming a stunt performer. Uh, so uh, my very first job. Um, I arrived on set, you go through, uh, you change your clothes, you go into your trailer, you put on the same wardrobe. Um, you have to be, when you're hired, you're hired, well, hopefully, you're hired because, one, you have the skills that are required uh, to do the job, and two, because you're the general dimensions, the height and weight um, and, and shape as the actor mm -hmm. that you're there to double. So you're six feet tall, 170 pounds, 180 pounds, which was my general category. Um, so there's now, not a lot then, of five foot, two hundred and fifty pound guys doing stunt work, is what you're telling me. <laughs> uh, I haven't met too many. No. Uh, it, well, it depends. Whatever the general, um, whatever the average actor's height is out there, you can bet there's uh, more stunt performers that size around than other categories. Right. Um, we have a little bit of everything out there within the union and within the associations, but um, the the average size is uh, uh, five eight, five nine, and uh, six feet tall. Um, then there's guys that are six five. Then there's guys that are like five three um, on the on the other scales of things. But uh, the the majority are between six one and five eight. Okay. Um, no, I fit in there. But uh, yeah, well, there you go. Um, <laughs> so, so you arrive, you put on your wardrobe, you t change out of your old clothes, uh, your own personal clothes. You take any jewelry off. Um, you put on the wardrobe uh, of the character. Then you go through hair and makeup. And um, as as I was saying, my first job, uh, I had to wear a wig, um, a long black wig. Uh, uh, I think it was a long black mullet wig. <laughs> and um, and then. Sort of inbred hillbilly <laughs> kind of wig, and then, uh, and then the next thing I had to wear a prosthetic nose um, and a mustache and a beard I had to be glued on. So, so sometimes uh, you have to go through all that um, to look like your actor, and sometimes you show up and you look identical to your actor because your hair has been cut in advance um, and you don't require much preparation at all. So you walk in, you put on your wardrobe. You change out of your clothes, put on the character's wardrobe, and hair and makeup look at you and go, perfect, and they don't do anything to you. <laughs> Did you have to uh, so, shave your head for Dominic Purcell? Because I think he, he was bald in that uh, movie, right? He wasn't bald, but he was short. buzzed like, like less. It was like half an inch okay. everywhere. Yeah, yeah, it was a pretty short haircut. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I didn't mind. It, it was fun, and uh, um, I liked – uh, I liked another reason to stay in shape. Like I said, I was in the Bahamas, so yeah. <laughs> I was uh, eating a little extra and whatnot. So it gave me a reason to <laughs> jump back in the gym and whatnot. I think I had uh, I was lifting sandbags on set in between um, <laughs> takes just to try and 
keep up with him because he was in really good shape at the time. Yeah. As well. well, I'm I'm looking here uh, at actors that you've doubled, and in uh, the TV show Welcome to Paradox, you doubled Ice T. How how does that work? <laughs> 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 oh geez, wow, that's a long time ago. Um that's funny. Um <laughs> that's funny because JJ uh Macro, my partner on Arrow, was the stunt coordinator on that show at the time. And I asked the same question. They called me <laughs> and said, We want you to come. Do you know who Ice T is? <laughs> and I'm like, Do I? Because I was a big rap fan back in the day and hip hop fan and and, and they're like, we want you to double him. I went, are you nuts? <laughs> um, but uh, I, I've got a, I've got a fairly um, olive complexion. So in the, that was in the summertime, and I tan up like I was really dark. But I showed up like embarrassed, to, you know, <laughs> to be there. And um, and I was darker. Like I was quite a bit darker. Yeah, Ice T's um, sort of. Um, uh, again, he he's got an olive-ish or uh, complexion, but very light-skinned. Right. Um, and at the time, I was I was darker toned and more ready toned, so they lightened me up and and um, and changed my hairline because he's got a higher hairline and all that sort of stuff. But I mean, I looked nothing like him. Right. Um, and realistically, they I forget what the scene was. I think. It was getting elbowed in the face playing basketball in, in a prison sequence or something to that effect. Okay. But I, I'm pretty sure they kept me in my trailer, like kept me away from him so he wouldn't uh, see me and, and <laughs> go, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> he wouldn't know that you were you doubling know? him. <laughs> yeah. Great. Like, I, uh, later on in a, in a movie, um, 3,000 3, Miles of Graceland, um, uh, another one of my friends uh, doubled him who looks far more like him and... Uh, and should be doubling him. And uh, I, I think I went up to Ice T's, uh, get a couple guys with him, a couple, bit of an entourage, and and I, uh, you know, became friendly with them. And I, and I started telling them, you know, I doubled him, you know, way back. In and they're like, get the fuck out of here. I didn't say that. Yeah, I, that's funny. I uh, forgot all about that. Yeah, yeah, good question. Nobody <laughs> else has, has ever brought that up. And that's a funny story. Cause we that dig was deep like, on the resume here. Oh, uh, no, that was great. That was like ridiculous <laughs> moments in stunts. Like, <laughs> ridiculous. I was like embarrassed to be there. Yeah. and I, I mean, I was a fan, a big fan of Ice-T and, and uh, uh, still am. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, just the wrong guy for the job. <laughs> <laughs> just now, the totally wrong guy. Now, do do you have anybody in in uh, you know in the film industry or television industry that you haven't worked with that you would want to one day? No. Um, I would have loved to have worked with Bruce Lee, but of course he's passed on. Yeah. Right. Um, um, I and he's not particularly. Uh, uh, involved in the film industry, although he is, but Muhammad Ali is another uh, mm -hmm. huge hero of mine that realistically uh, I've been wanting to meet him and shake his hand for many years. Um, that's on my bucket list. Uh, as far as the film industry goes, um, you know, uh, I don't know. Ice um, Cube. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I want to double Ice Cube. Yeah, that's my that's my thing. Um, no, uh, it's you know what? It's, uh, I've got a lot of respect for a lot of people um, out there, um, but I don't. I I like who I'm working with right now, and and I look forward to going to work every day and and uh, seeing our team on Arrow and working with Stephen and. David Ramsey and and uh, Katie Lotz and and everybody in creating action there. It's I'm, I'm doing what I love right now, so I'm not the kind of guy that always looks somewhere else and and uh, wishes he were there. Right. Um, and uh, you know what? If they do another, if they knew another Batman, um, hopefully uh, the DC people and the WP people have enjoyed what i've done on on arrow and mm -hmm. uh i'd love to uh apply what i do to arrow um in in another uh batman 
Well, you might yeah, get that'd be cool because that's you a might lot of get hand-to-hand you too. might get the chance with uh, Ben Affleck stepping up to the plate with the, uh, the well, next Superman sequel. Yeah, hey, well, if uh, if for some reason they uh, want to put me in there, I'd, I'd love to do that. Um, seems to be uh, my niche at the moment. Yeah, if they ever um, get around to a Justice League movie too. Yeah, oh, I would I would eat that for breakfast. <laughs> Um, and I really, as far as, as far as actors, um, I like working with actors that are athletic and can handle a certain amount and like training and, and, uh, accept, uh, accept instruction. Um, so that's, that's a lot of different people. I mean, uh, right. Brad, Brad Pitt's done a fantastic job throughout his career. Um, Steven's really stepped up to the plate. I worked with Jason Momoa quite a bit, and he was really uh, top notch. I had a, a great time with him on Stargate Atlantis, and uh, he was a great student and, and and just a natural as far as um, athleticism and fighting. Um, Malcolm Jamal Warner, I worked with a lot, and Luke Perry on um, Jeremiah. Both of them, I'd, I'd work with again anytime, uh, uh, stunt wise. Um, I, I like working with uh, actors that I've that I've worked before and and, and uh, formed a bond with, friendship wise um, mm-hmm. and professionally. Um, I'm not the kind of guy that is a is a big um, sort of star worshiper. Right. So uh, I like good people. That's so. Cool. Well, I can tell you yeah. that uh, we're okay with where you're at too, because I mean Arrow is is just. But I, I know it's my personal favorite show on TV right now. I know Ben is a huge fan. Of yeah, it we're we're both huge fans of Arrow. Oh, cool. Um, oh, thanks, guys. I'm I'm a I'm a pretty big fan myself. I'm having a good time. <laughs> so we, it's a, it's a, we're we're allowed to do something. You know, this is a show that I every time I design a fight or a sequence, it's it's something I, I put myself in that position. Uh, so when I was younger and, and, you know, would fit in the leather suit, um, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, something that I would, I would die for this job as, as a, as a stunt performer. Um, so, uh, that's, I, I do that. I do it with that in mind. Um, and it's just a, a bigger challenge every day and, and a different challenge every day. And it never gets boring. So would you, would you say, obviously then, it, they each have their own perks, but television show over feature film, if, if you could pick which kind of project to work on? Well, I've been doing, uh, I've done a lot of television. And uh, certain, like my partner JJ uh, prefers the feature film um, um, section of, of the industry. Uh, I've worked on a lot of feature films as well. Um, uh, he spent more time there. And he he's always said to me we'd we'd meet in a in a common office at Stunts Canada and he'd be prepping lunch show and I'd be on a television show and he'd go how can you do that all the time how can you do that you know every day it's the same thing and I'm like no it's not I have a week to figure out what I'm going to do right. and then maybe four hours rehearsal for a different fight every week or a different sequence every week you guys have like three months to work on the same freaking fight or whatever yeah. on a feature film. And I'm really proud of what I'm able to do uh, with this, the short period of time that I have to do, you know, it. And now, and now JJ sees that he's been obviously on, on the show, and uh, he's applied his vast knowledge um, from Featureland, and uh, it's been a really great combination of of, uh, of information uh, exchange, and. Um, I really, uh, back in the day, I really liked uh, the feature world, but I like basically making feature quality uh, work on a television schedule. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, now being the coordinator, um, obviously every actor is probably a little bit different. Uh, Stephen Amell seems pretty active as far as, uh, you know, not necessarily stunts, but like, you know, action type stuff goes. Uh, do you end up doing a lot of work with the actors uh, or maybe um, yes. you know, more work with the doubles and other stunt crew? No, of course. Well, what um, the way it goes, it goes like uh, we get the script, uh, we break it down, 
Uh, we look at it uh, for budget purposes. We look at it creatively. We have meetings. We have brainstorming sessions with our with our stud team. We discuss uh, everything that could, should, and would happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we break off and we decide what we're you know what we're going to do, what we're going to keep uh, budget wise, and all that sort of thing. Which scenes. And then we split off, and uh, I'll go uh, and start choreographing if there's a fight or whatever. And I'll do that with the stunt doubles and, uh, you know, the other bad guys, the ND nondescript mm-hmm. stunt guys. I'll start creating the sequence. And then once I've polished that to uh, an acceptable level, then I'll bring in the actors, and the actors will start learning. Um, and I'll use the stunt doubles to teach the actors and... Uh, you know they've formed a bond as well. So, right now, do a um, lot of the uh, do a lot of the actors um, have some sort of hand to hand combat experience, or do you have to teach a lot of them? Uh, they're all different. You know, um, they all come from different backgrounds. So some of them come with previous martial arts experience. Uh, uh, some of them come with extensive martial arts experience. Some of them come with some. Uh, I like to call it film foo experience. <laughs> so they've they've done some training at, at a stunt uh, um, gymnasium or two uh, down in LA or or where have you. Um, so they've you know they've got some experience. Some come without any experience, and and then I have to teach them from scratch. So um, in the beginning uh, of Arrow, uh, I spent a lot of time with Stephen. Um, I don't think he's been. I don't think he's punched anyone in the face uh, in real life. Um, <laughs> he's, he's a really nice guy, and, uh, and he doesn't have a, um, a harmful bone in his body. I don't think he'd, he'd like to hurt anyone. Um, uh, so I spent a lot of time training basics of technique with him, footwork, how to how to punch, how to how to kick, uh, stick work, knife work weapons, uh, how to wield the bow as if it's a weapon other right. than, you know, what it's obviously utilized for, um, which is shooting arrows. Uh, we've, we've used it for other purposes, uh, shielding, blocking, um, striking, um, um, trapping. So uh, we, we took the original recurve bow and just you know, started playing around with it and meant, what else can we do with this thing? You know? Right. Um, and tried to create a whole new style. Uh, and so I did basically a boot camp with Steven. And then when we came back to series in season one, he came here a couple weeks early and, and him and I just went to the gym and refreshed a lot of stuff and made him sweat and, you know, yeah, got his abs perky. <laughs> and, uh, threw a, not that that's hard because they're always there. Um, but uh, and and through uh, he does he does a lot of you know he does mostly his own training as far as conditioning is concerned. But uh, we we I used uh, different um, drills to you know to get him to sweat and whatnot that involved martial arts punching and kicking and whatnot. And we did the same thing at the beginning of season two. Um, I didn't have as much time. Then it, it's hard. It gets harder and harder to uh, to get time with him. He's got a lot of. Uh, press engagements and, and promotion that he's involved in. So, yeah, we know. and now, we know. And now he's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and now he's got a, a baby, um, Mavi. So you have. Um, uh, am I right that you just had a, a baby not too long ago? That is correct. And her name is Jade. And thank you. Yeah, she's a month and a half old. Wow. Oh wow. And uh, I think I think Stephen's uh, little girl is like six months old uh, now. So we're all best friends. <laughs> But yeah, well, they haven't met yet, but uh, Stevens, Stevens met and held my little girl. Um, it was my birthday last week, and uh, my wife surprised me on set. We were in the middle of a huge scene, and she came to uh, she came at lunch with a cake and a bottle of champagne that we, of course, couldn't drink, and um, <laughs> and and brought my baby. And the ads were carrying my baby, and then Steven had a had a had a go at uh, holding my daughter. She loved him. He's the uh, baby whisperer now. So, <laughs> so uh, um, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you had mentioned earlier too that, um, you know, how Steven stays in shape and, and such and everything. And he's, 
obviously he's very active on social media. He's very engaging with his fans and, and things like that. And I, you had mentioned the promotion and everything. And we're, we're obviously at one point hoping that we can get him on to our show to talk to him too. But, but one of the things that he makes yeah. it well known is that it's, it's obvious it's him doing the salmon ladder in those scenes. Yes. Oh yes. Oh uh, yes. 100%. Uh, who do you think could make it higher? You or him? Uh, him, (laughs) (laughs) him, uh, I'm, uh, it's not my job to stay in shape on the show. It's my (laughs) job to make sure that they stay in shape. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I work, uh, many, uh, many hours, you know, 12, 14 hours, 17 hours sometimes. And really the gym, my gym time suffers when we're shooting. Um, I can imagine. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I wake up in the morning and I do like 50 push-ups and 50 squats and uh, a little bit of stretching. Sometimes when we can manage it, uh, the stunt boys and I, uh, at lunchtime, we throw on some sparring gear and we beat the shit out of each other. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, aside from that, it's not my regular thing. When I'm on holidays, like when we're not when we're wrapped for the season, yeah. then I get in the gym and I and I do regular sparring. I really love. Sparring. I love uh, well, punching people and kicking people. <laughs> I guess. Um, so I wonder, I wonder why. That's what I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's just it's just that one of those things. But uh, th- that's how I like to keep in shape. Um, and actually, now that, that the baby's gotten here, um, I seem to be a lot more active, uh, running around, uh, carrying her, and <laughs> and uh, you know that sort of thing. Um, I'm not eating as much, um, but it's 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 hard. I I don't envy Stephen um, with our schedule. I don't know how he manages to stay in such top shape because he looks fantastic at all times, and and quite frankly, it makes me sick. Um, because, <laughs> <laughs> because, and I tell him so all the time because it's really <laughs> difficult. For me, he's like, yeah, bam, bam, just, uh, you just have that other piece of cake. Why don't you just eat that? Yeah, you go ahead. Uh, I'm like, why don't you have some? Nah, nah. I, yeah, I was going to say, he probably doesn't eat a whole lot of cake. Uh, nah, nah. <laughs> he's, he's pretty much gluten-free and, and dairy-free and all that sort of stuff. He, he, oh. uh, he's, he's very, he's very uh, loyal to his fans, and, and, uh, and uh, with that comes uh, a lot of hard work. Right, and Ben had said, and you know uh, how active he is on social media. Uh, I think it was last yeah. week, a week or so ago. Uh, There's a video that he posted on Twitter. Um, it was you, him, and the Arrow stunt crew um, with about yeah. 30 seconds of the slow motion fighting, maybe like 10 or 15 seconds at normal speed. Now that you know that one piece, um, I'm not sure if you've seen the video, but the one that one 30 yeah. seconds or you know 20 seconds of normal speed. I've, I I I filmed most of it. Okay. <laughs> How long Which does it fun. take? How long would it take to? Does it usually take to choreograph just that one like little piece? Well, that was uh, what you saw there was the Friday after we had already been rehearsing that for like, uh, let me see, we did one eight-hour day uh, with all the stunt guys. We did one four-hour day with all the stunt guys, and then that day that you saw on film was the very beginning of a 10 hour rehearsal day. So, um, so that particular fight, that was the big fight that I was mentioning previously. Um, that took, I think a total of like 22 hours of rehearsal. Wow. Just for that. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, But what you saw there was just a a moment in that fight. That fight had, uh, three sections Mm -hmm. to it. And what you saw was, a quarter of one section. Okay. So, I um, you know, so basically you saw a blink in, just a little bit in the eye. Uh, yeah, very, very, very little bit of it. Yeah. Okay. Now we know we know you. Go, it goes on forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know that you said in that video too that uh, uh, um, that you couldn't you couldn't say what episode that fight scene was from. But, you know, as I had mentioned before, Adam and I are big Arrow fans and Steven being the way he is on social media, he's come out and said yeah. a couple of times that this week's episode coming up is probably the biggest episode this show has seen so far. Um, 
like the, I, it's it's very large. It's very large. But that that massive fight is not in this episode. That's uh, not okay. This episode coming. No, no, no. The the episode coming up this week is the one we shot directly after uh, Christmas break, and it's directed by Glenn Winter, one of our DPs, and one of our one of our uh, most illustrious directors as well. And um, uh, Glenn Winter, of course, was a director of photography and a director on Smallville. And uh, he's been around for years, and he's very creative. And uh, this uh, episode coming up has a lot of action, a lot of big action, and it's basically it's it's got one of our largest single um, sequences, uh, which uh, what's what's known as a oneer. Uh, a oneer shot is a is a shot that from beginning to end rolls with one camera. And uh, it has several occurrences in the shot that are major stunts. Probably the the biggest one that we've done ever, um, not just fight wise, but um, um, large stunt wise. There's explosions. There's there's wire stunts. There's there's guys falling. Uh, there's guys getting thrown all over the place. And it all occurs in one massive crane shot. Uh, now this this particular episode coming up. Is means uh, a great deal to me because we prepped it before Christmas, and then I told all the producers and everyone that well I don't know if I'm going to be able to, you know, hang out because my baby's being born, mm-hmm. you know, in January, and you know I don't know, and uh, it was the morning that my daughter was due on the 16th of January. Mm-hmm. Um, I got up at seven in the morning, or I had to be at work at seven in the morning. Got up at like 5:30 or something. My wife said, I think I think she's coming today. And I said, honey, <laughs> just close your eyes. <laughs> I got to go take care of this. It was the day of like the biggest, the biggest sequence in the whole episode. Yeah. And I'm like, just tell her not to come for a couple hours. I just got to go to set. And like literally, it's funny. She goes, okay, well, my mom will come and uh, hold your breath. Don't push. Like, what yeah. do you do? Don't push. Yeah. yeah. So. I knew my daughter would. Uh, I knew my daughter would would wait. So I went to work, and everybody knew that you know that the baby was probably coming. And she kept me updated. Oh no, my water hasn't broke. Oh shit, my water broke. Oh. <laughs> and right, we had to do. We did like two takes. We'd rehearsed all morning, and everything was going fine. And uh, behind the scenes were there, and everything. And we did two takes, and something went wrong in the second take. <laughs> and I had a microphone, and I'm like. I've got to go. You got. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, I know we're definitely we were, looking forward to it. Oh, it's great! It's it's uh, it's going to be fantastic and very very well shot. Awesome, uh, yeah. You, Glenn does a fantastic job. You have me wishing. Yeah, I know. You have, you have me wishing it was Wednesday already. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know uh, when I guess it was back around Christmas they had announced about the the crossover with. Um, bring Grant Gustin in for The Flash. And that's when yeah. I decided to actually start watching it. So that was, I think it was a few days after Christmas. So between that and I think it came back mid-January. Um, so in that two weeks, I watched all of season one and uh, caught up in season two. It's, it's oh, that's one of those you shows you just... To watch, that's when you decided to watch Arrow, period, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's when yeah, I started yeah. it. Um, it. It's just one of those shows, you know, it, the way where it stops... You just want to put on another episode, and the fight scenes have a huge uh, part to do with that. Because you, you know, like you said, some of them you can tell it, it's choreographed, and these look a lot more like actual um, people fighting. <laughs> yeah, that's the uh, that's the uh, that's what I'm trying to achieve. Yeah, I mean, um, I I was a big fan of Smallville. I I never missed an episode of Smallville when Smallville was on. And I was kind of lenient or iffy on watching Arrow. I, I got caught up the same way Adam did. I, I kind of binge watched it, mainly because I, I kind of grew accustomed to the actor that had played Green Arrow and Oliver Queen in Smallville. And yeah. I, I wasn't sure how this take on, on the show was going to be. But when I started watching it, and it's mainly in part to you and the rest of your team, you you make Steven look so much more of a badass as Green Lantern <laughs> well, well, or as Green well, Arrow. Then, ju- then Justin? <laughs> then Justin, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Justin was great, uh, but I think Steven's got him. I think Steven could take Justin. Just the way. Yeah, like, I, uh, 
Funny enough, um, well, there's a, there's a lot different though. Like, I mean, the suit itself that he wears yeah. mm-hmm. is just so much less cartoonish looking. Yeah, it, um, it doesn't have any neon green or <laughs> or that um, big uh, cod piece sort of <laughs> yeah. looking. I've actually I've actually worn the Smallville costume. I doubled Justin a couple times um, as Green Arrow on uh, on Smallville in a couple fights. Um, I think one particularly when he fought Lex Luthor in the in the mansion. Um, well, now I, I feel bad about saying that, that I. Was. Now I feel bad about saying that Stephen is better than Justin, because now you because oh, no, you don't. filled in. No, 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 don't. <laughs> I, I, they they brought me in there um, simply because I had some some pipes. Um, although Justin's like two inches tall, I think he's like six two or six three, and yeah. the guy is like a, a specimen. Um, Justin is like, look, you know, I'm as straight as you get, and the guy's a beautiful man. <laughs> he's, just like, he's, he's very pretty, um, um, and and I just don't like knowing the character now. I just don't see Justin as that. I don't see him on the island with um, with uh, you know uh, streaks and tips, kind of like blonde streaked hair and yeah, that sort of yeah. thing. It just doesn't have that roughness that Steven has been able to capture. It's just, it's just different. You know, Smallville was a different show altogether. It was more shiny, uh, bright colored, um, and we're more uh, Batman Begins, uh, darker. Right. Um, Plus, you know. Uh, go ahead. Darker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just darker, period. It, it's, it's, just gonna... it's grittier. Yeah. Ex- exactly. And that's what I, you know, and, and that lends itself more to my style, I, I like. I mean, I can do the the uh, old school or the new school, Hong Kong, where whatever direction you want to go with fight action or any action. Period. But I prefer, even though we're doing a, you know, it's a superhero show. I prefer the audience to to feel every hit, like to feel the brutality. It, yeah. It's fighting. I mean, right. you know, it, it's violence, man. You know, it's not <laughs> it's not supposed to be, although it is pretty at times, um, it's supposed to look like it frickin' hurts because yeah. it does. Right. Yeah, I mean, up until you know? a little while ago, it, there were no, uh, like, superpower type of things other than, um, you know, now there's Correct. a little bit of super strength. But before, it was literally just all fight. You know, you had to – it was it relied heavily on fighting. And, um, you know, if – yes. You know, Smallville was a little more, uh, you know, obviously dealing with Superman, not quite as much. Yeah, Smallville was far more cartoon. Um, right. Yeah, and yeah, and and softer and and that sort of thing. And yeah, it's a completely different show. We try to stay, and we were told right off the bat that although yes, we are uh, the character has a uh, comic book origin, we are trying to stay grounded uh, in reality, and and we still. Like I still, uh, and Stephen constantly questions, well, why are we doing this? Uh, okay, if I'm running down the stairs here and a, a guy is firing a, a, a gun, a machine gun towards me, and the bullets are striking here on the stairs, I wouldn't dive this way to get out of the way of the bullets because that would be diving directly into the, the path of the, of the fire. So mm-hmm. I would dive, you know. So, you know, little details like that. Um, uh, we all try to to uh, maintain the proper mythology uh, within the show, right. and uh, and Stephen's got a really um, intelligent, inquisitive mind. So he, even he he owns that character, and he tries to make sure that Oliver Queen and or Arrow uh, doesn't do the wrong thing when it comes to you know character uh, motivation. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, now, real quick before we uh, start to wrap up, um, now you're from uh, Victoria, British Columbia, right, originally? Yes, yeah, sir. I just got off the ferry and and uh, landed back in Vancouver, right from there. Right, and that's where Arrow uh, films in Vancouver. And, um, yeah. and you're the president of Stutz Canada, like we said before. But when I was looking Correct. at the resume, um, at your resume yeah. that you have listed, uh, under athletics, I didn't see hockey. <laughs> and that struck me as a little interesting. You had to go there. Um, well, I'm surprised well, they didn't let. Well, without that listed, I'm surprised that they didn't kick you out of the country. Yeah, I know, right? Um, 
here's here's a couple here's a couple points on that subject. Our <laughs> actual national sport is lacrosse. Okay. Which is a much tougher manlier sport. Yes. I played two um, years of that. Yeah, I, I I grew up playing box lacrosse. Um uh, when I was in kindergarten my dad was a lacrosse player. He threw me in lacrosse right off the bat. Um but so many people loved hockey. Hockey became our secondary um national sport and then it adapted as as our other national sport but officially our national sport was lacrosse Um, so let's just say that (laughs) now there you go now i grew up i grew up amongst a ton of people playing lacrosse also i played rugby and and that sort of stuff but i also grew up amongst a ton of people that played hockey now i was an only child and i didn't like um, team sports that much when I was a kid and I didn't want to play I didn't want to do what every other kid did so mm-hmm. I started martial arts I started uh, karate when I was like nine years old um, and I saw, I saw yeah I saw a Bruce Lee movie uh, <laughs> Enter the Dragon my uncles took me uh, to a drive-in theater and that's the, the path that I chose um, hockey I found hockey to be very generic um, when I was a kid, I was playing football at the time at a very young age, and, and, and I was going towards football, and uh, I sprained my ankle during lunch hour basketball, and so I ended up in martial arts as a birthday present, hmm. and, 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 you know, I wanted to do that anyway, but right. long story short, um, long story short, most of the kids that I grew up with who were playing hockey are not in the NHL, but I chose <laughs> martial arts, and I'm choreographing quite a of fantastic tv series so screw you hockey players <laughs> <laughs> now um, but I, I many people have tried to get me to like hockey and bought me tickets and you know right on the ice and center ice and everything and i'm like i end up in the concession stand you know for most of the game because it bores the shit out of me <laughs> um, other than hockey then are you a big sports fan of any of the other major sports like nfl uh mlb I was nba in- yeah, I was a huge, uh, I was a huge NFL fan. But um, I mean, it's maybe it's cliche, but I've always been a boxing fan and a kickboxing fan, and now, of course, UFC. Um, as long as uh, certain certain fighters, I don't right. like the UFC as it's uh, as a whole, but mm-hmm. certain fighters I follow and I'm a big fan of. Um, I love uh, very technical fighters. I've, I've, I'm a huge Muhammad Ali fan. Um, uh, anybody that has that much technique and brains um, behind what they do, uh, I'm a fan of. So, depending on what that sport is, okay. Anything, anything combative. <laughs> anything um, where you get to hit people. Yeah, generally, uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> which uh, which NFL team? Legal. I used to be a huge Steelers fan. Really? Uh, oh, okay. Like That's way closer. way back in the day, but. Pittsburgh, yeah, but but that was when I was, you know, I was a kid. Uh, Terry Bradshaw, I think, was still playing. That was a long time ago, right? right. <laughs> like a real long time ago. And then he ended up in a bunch of um, um, movies with stunts in them with uh, Burt Reynolds. Yeah, sm- the sm- uh, Cannibal Run. Exactly. Movies. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's probably why I was a fan of him. Yeah. So, um, all right, we're gonna we're gonna get ready to wrap things up. But at the end of at the end of our interviews, what we like to do is we like to throw just a couple rapid fire questions at you. Um, sure. Adam's gonna throw them at you. Just uh, answer, you know, whatever the first thing that comes to your head. This will be fun. <laughs> <laughs> they're not too difficult. Yeah, they're not difficult questions. Um, what okay, is go nuts. your favorite place to go on vacation? Uh, I don't. I don't have favorites, but I love Italy. Um, and uh, I love Italy. I love uh, Central America, El Salvador. We have family there. Um, I love Jamaica. Um, I love Paris. <laughs> but So I, I, I'm, a, I'm a huge traveler, so I don't like to go to one place. I can't say okay. one favorite. Sorry. Okay. Right. Uh, and I, I probably already know the answer to this question uh, now after we've talked to you, but have you ever been in a real fight? <laughs> yeah okay and uh i, I was gonna say uh, who won most of the time i guess i should say now um no when i was a kid i got picked on a fair amount when i was a little kid i was very shy so i got uh there were some bullies that were much older and and bigger than me that 
sort of stood in the same place when I walked to school every day. Mm. But for some reason, I still took the same route every day <laughs> <laughs> to get picked on. And then eventually um, I started martial arts when I was, you know, nine or ten. And I went and knocked on a couple doors and <laughs> and took my revenge. Um, <laughs> That's so, how you do it. Um, yeah. Uh, favorite pizza topping? Oh, pepperoni. Oh, good, good choice. choice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And now uh, I've noticed on your Twitter a, a couple videos, one with uh, Paul Blackthorne, um, about Cigar Fridays. So i got to ask, yeah, what's I've... your favorite cigar? Oh, it's favorite cigar. Well, I, did, I instituted Cigar Fridays on Arrow uh, last year. So um, every I make the stunt guys bring a cigar or a different one all the time, and <laughs> we find some time to smoke, and I try to get the actors involved. Steven, Steven will join me once in a while. Paul was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I uh, I did a movie in Cuba a couple years ago um, because I can, because I'm Canadian, um, <laughs> and, uh, and 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 brought back a whole bunch of Cohibas. They are not my favorite. The Maduro 5, Cohiba Maduro 5 is one of my favorites. But currently, uh, CAO makes, makes, um, makes a double Maduro. Uh, leaf um, cigar. Uh, it's got a red label, and currently the CAO is my uh, favorite. They had a Sopranos edition, which comes in a package that looks like a trunk of a car, <laughs> and, like 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 you stuffed a dead body in That's it. That's awesome. And it, and, and, <laughs> and it came with three uh, Maduro wrapped uh, cigars. And City Cigar in Vancouver, which is my favorite shop, I like to go to. Uh, they can't seem to get a hold of. Uh, uh, that uh, those the Sopranos edition any longer. So, on any suggestions, anybody, you know, <laughs> let me know on Twitter where I can get these things because they're, yeah. they're gold to me. If you don't already follow uh, James on Twitter, it's at James Bamford. Give him a follow because uh, you won't regret it at all. Um, <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Sure. Uh, favorite musician or band to listen to? Oh God! Yeah. Well, as you know, I'm not much of a favorite yeah. guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Three of these questions but, uh, are favorites, and off the bat, you said you don't like favorites. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have like I, I I grew up listening to so many different uh, forms of music. So I like uh, dancehall reggae. I like uh, you know I like Benny Man. I like uh, Bounty Killer. I Ice like tea. Eminem. I like Ice T. <laughs> I like uh, Van Halen. I like Bon Jovi. Which you know. Van Halen? <laughs> yeah. Oh, the original Van Halen. Okay, okay. all right. The original. All right. Yeah, not, uh, not Sammy Hagar. Not Van, Van Hagar, Halen, yeah. not Van Hagar. Yeah. 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 Um, no, 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 no. The real Van Halen. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, now, if you, yeah, last dude. one, final one. If you could win any award, not necessarily, doesn't have to be TV or film related, which award would you want to win? Huh. Uh, one that's actual that's an actual award it, or one that I made up you can make it up <laughs> <laughs> it's your initial well, go ahead well thanks <laughs> um, uh, I'd like a combination of world's greatest dad best friend husband I think they have it yeah I, I, somewhere I, I, yeah <laughs> I, I think that could easily be a good, uh, the best answer. I know they've gotten that question for it. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but that's that's uh, you know that's what's important to me. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's a lot of talk about the the stunt coordinator uh, Emmy, um, and they're trying to. Uh, yeah, a lot of people were pissed off that we didn't get looked at last year and whatnot. But that's you know that's politics and whatnot. But right. that would be wonderful for us to win that. We've won a couple Leo awards. Uh, yeah, I saw that uh, for the. Toyfa Award. The Halo um, uh, TV thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, Arrow also won for um, for uh, television as well. Oh, did it? Okay. Uh, for the Leo Award, too. So we, we, we all entered sort of separately. I did Halo in between the Arrow pilot and the series. So JJ entered uh, Arrow, the, the pilot, and I entered Halo. Um, and we both won. So different categories. So it was go. great. <laughs> So it's kind of like we both won anyway. Yeah, it was good. So um, hopefully, you know, the awards to me are, it's great to be recognized by your peers. But like I said, I'd, I'd like to be um, the greatest 
dad, husband, best friend, uh, person, human being, if possible. And that's probably impossible, but <laughs> well, if there's a, if we have ever have an award show on our show, we'll uh, make sure to implement that category. <laughs> awesome. And you'll be the first nominee. <laughs> Thanks brother. <laughs> well, I, we, we, uh, we know we certainly went over the, uh, the 15 yeah. minutes we, we said we were going to spend with you. So, you know, and we know well, you, that's fine. we know you just got home. So, I mean, we really appreciate you spending some time with us tonight. This was a, you know, this was great talking to you. Oh, I was just going to watch Game of Thrones. So, um, <laughs> that's all good. Still getting caught up, yeah. trying, getting caught up before season three starts. No, I'm, I've, I'm, I've purchased all of season three, um, on, um, uh, Sony PlayStation or, here, so or season four. So I'm, yeah, I, was, I meant season yeah, four. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, I'm on. I'm on episode um, nine of season three. Oh, so, you're 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 like so, two. You're like two episodes away from one of the biggest episodes that season shows. Oh yeah, well the one I'm watching right now is uh, David Nutter, uh, who directed our pilot, and of course lots of uh, fantastic television. He's directed this episode I'm watching right now, so it's I'm looking forward to. Checking it out. All right. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, do it, dude. It's wicked. Yeah, I, awesome. I saw the pilot, and that was it, because uh, I don't have HBO. <laughs> um, oh, really? Yeah, I'm borrowing oh. my buddy's HBO Go, though. So, Oh, I'll just go grab it. rent. Can you get DVDs or something where you live? Uh, I don't know. We have uh, Redbox, I think, is the only thing that does DVDs anymore. I, I have them, Adam. I'll load them to you. Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah, I'll load them to you. You should really still watch DVDs because they're awesome, and yeah. they have behind the scenes and stuff like that, which are fun. I still buy them, but all the DVD oh, rental places around here close. All we have are red boxes. Yeah, we have we have um, we have one because um, I live in like a little Italy, like a like a little Manhattan sort of area in Vancouver, and there's this one company. It's a family owned, and they ca- they stayed open. And because all the big ones like Blockbuster closed and whatnot, these guys are flourishing. I was yeah. going to say they're probably making a killing. Oh, yeah. And they have such a huge selection. Um, all the stuff that I love, you know, from back in the day, they've got anything you, you look for in there. So. That's actually uh, when Blockbuster was going out of business. That's how I bought the first two seasons to uh, on DVD for Fringe. Which you oh, really? did an episode for? Or, uh, oh, a few, a few, yeah. I was gonna say, I, I know I saw that in there somewhere. That was another great show. Yeah, I did some uh, acting and some other stuff in there. Uh, well, acting, if you can call it that. <laughs> hey, I, I've done I've done extra work before. I I consider that acting. Yeah, more acting <laughs> than oh, I really? Okay. Yeah, I so, now yeah. I actually had lines, um, but. Uh, the director wanted me to act like a robot, basically. So yeah. I, I don't really like I don't like the performance at all. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, whatever. You I'll have to go it. back and watch the uh, the episode, see if I can pick you up. I think it's season four. I'm not, yeah. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, I think it was second to last season. So. All right. Well, I mean, we won't take up any more of your time. We'll let you go so you can get get to watching Game of Thrones. Okay, man. Nice so, talking to you. Guys. Yeah, thanks. Thanks yeah, a lot for really spending some time it. with us tonight. And, uh, you know, hopefully, if you, when you get back to set, you can uh, you can put in a good word for us to to Stephen and the rest of the crew. So maybe we can get them on sure, sometime well. down the road. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, like I said, it. if you don't follow him on Twitter, it's at James Bamford. Is so it? Make sure you do okay, that. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna follow him. I'm gonna follow him. <laughs> So. Are we still on air? Jeez. Yeah. It's, uh, well, we're going to wrap things up now. So. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. All right. Well, All right, thanks, thanks again for spending some time with us. Oh, anytime. Call anytime. All right. Appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs>